In the podcasting life, they must fight to survive. Shackled by the chains of the past. They're the biggest of geeks, cause they watch every week. Subscribe to see if they can last. Go, go, Ranger Danger. We can't ever stop. Go, go, Ranger Danger. Podcast till we drop, probably forever. Get yeah, whatever. Ranger danger, ranger danger, ranger danger, ranger danger, ranger danger, dying or charge. Welcome once again to Ranger Danger Dino Supercharge. This is the podcast where desolation is all we see, liberation is what we need. Desperation is following us. If only we could feel like we're on a bus touched by the wings of an angel. On a bus? Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting that to go to on a bus. Well, I had to make it run with us because the, the song is singular. Oh, but we're right. both. You, you changed it. That's I why. wanted to include you, that's Michael. Why, that's why it's weird. Okay. It's weird because Matt. Oh, sorry for trying to bring you in on the festivities. All right. That's fine. I'll, I'll be not in on the festivities. How are you, Matt? Yeah, I'm alright. Better than I was last week, that's for sure. Yeah, you were. A little, little, little burnt out. Yeah, sorry about that one, guys. I'm not. Matt, we'll never, content. Matt will never be sorry, but uh, that's a failing on his part. As you say. Yeah. I am Matt. Mike, Michael is here. Yeah, hey guys. We're going to watch Power Rangers Dino Supercharge. In fact, specifically, we're going to be watching the episode Wings of Danger, the 824th episode of Power Rangers... Or, if you prefer, episode 15 of Powering Just Dino Supercharge. Yeah. Excited, Michael? I am a little excited. I was kind of, you know, we saw that one that was pretty good Mm. two weeks ago, and then last week the Halloween special was a bit of a, like... Filler episode. Oh, it's filler. It's nothing. Nothing's going on. So... You know where else nothing often goes on? No, Matt, where? The internet. Oh, I don't think that's true at all. I think there's places on the internet where that's true. Oh, yeah, that's probably true. Here we go. Uh, so our internet website, just as a like a an aside that I came to organically, is www.rangeagerpodcast.com. If you want to send us an email, we're rangeagerpodcast at gmail.com. We're also on the Twitter. If you want to send us a Twitter tweet, which I'd love, send us a Twitter tweet at rangerdcast. We're also on Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and Google+. Plus, plus we have a shop, rangerdangerpodcast.com slash shop, where you can buy things and stuff. Michael, can I make a confession to you? Uh, Oh, God, that depends on what it is, but let's just chance it. Go on. The only reason that I still say Google Plus in that section is so I can say Plus we have a show. Okay. That you don't want to direct people to Google Plus? I don't. I think there's like two people following us on Google Plus. Well, to those people, sorry. Our Google Plus is just a thing that automatically, like, because we've got a YouTube. Yeah. We just have a Google Plus and it says, hey, they put up a video. Yeah. Um, Don't go there. No. It doesn't... It will not help you in any way. No. Like, there, if, it, if it was on a map, there would be, like, here there'd be dragons, and a picture of what is clearly a whale. No, that sounds great. I love dragons. Do you love dragons that are secretly whales? Actually, no. When I put it like that, it sounds rad. Yes, it does. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Yeah. So, you had something you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, so, two things. First one, real quick. I love two things, real uh, quick. The first eight episodes of Dino Supercharge mm-hmm. are now on Netflix. Ah. So... If you've been waiting to watch this show, to watch them, you do, haven't heard me saying this, so it doesn't really help you specifically, but if you wanted to go back and rewatch some of them, maybe you missed a couple. Yeah, I uh, have actually missed a couple. I don't know if those are in the ones that have just gone up, but... Uh, some maybe. of them maybe. I don't know. Ah, yes, Home Run Coda. Look at that. Yep, Home Run Coda was a great one that you missed, so... Oh, we're looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, so there's a, there's a bunch of good ones there, mm. and uh, obviously we've got podcasts for all of them. We do. We are. We provide a full and comprehensive service in that regard. We certainly do. Mm. Uh, so, Matt, the second thing, exciting announcement this week. Ah. Justice League Power Rangers. Yeah. yeah. That's Justice League Money Ball for Power Rangers, specifically. Yes. Coming out from Boom Studios. And DC Comics. It's a co-publication. It is it's in both co-publicated. of their solicits. That's, I think co-publicated. Is that the sounds thing? correct, yeah. Now, unfortunately, our good friend and... I was about to say mentor for some reason. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it flowed on from that. Yeah. Our friend Kyle Higgins is not writing it. Yes, Ranger Danger Boom Room co-host Kyle Higgins. That's correct. 
But I am quite excited about the creative team that is on board. Yeah, so Tom Taylor is writing it. Matt, have you met Tom Taylor? Uh, I've seen him. Sure. Tom Taylor is a, a local. I don't know if he's from Sydney or Melbourne, but That's he's definitely definitely our part of the world. He, yeah, he's local in like for Australia. Yes. In America, I think if you live just like in America, that's not considered local. Yes, but, but for us. Yeah, we are so far away from everyone else who does everything that yes. even living on the same continent as us is pretty close to local. Yes. Um, I've spoken to him a couple of times. Yep. He, like, I bought a comic from him like a long time ago before he was Injustices and X-23's Tom Taylor. Um... Yeah, he's a cool dude. He does seem like a cool dude. I would absolutely say that. And I like I'm very excited to see what he does with the Justice League and the Power Rangers. Yeah. And so Carl Kershaw is drawing covers. I like Carl Kershaw a whole bunch. He's a good dude. And I mean that first cover that they released with the, the press release is like pretty good. This is gonna be some good stuff. And Stephen Byrne is drawing it and oh boy. Yeah. That's an exciting announcement. That because like I have seen Stephen Burns work around, but yeah. I, I wasn't on like name. I couldn't remember yes, sure. But as soon as I saw that art, I was like, oh, I know this work, and I was so excited. Yeah, because he's one of those guys that you see his art, and you're like, why isn't he doing a monthly book? Yeah, why isn't it happening? Now it is. Yeah, and it's powering just just as all right. So yeah, uh, I can confirm for you that Tom Taylor lives in Melbourne. There you go. So he's one thousand kilometers away from us, but a local for us. I mean, that's closer than any other city. Yes. That's, that's true. That's pretty close. That's pretty close. Yeah. Uh, so we, that's starting in January, I believe. Um, we're all, like we're both pretty excited about that. Yeah. Um, absolutely. And I just like both existing Power Rangers comics mm-hmm. are great. Mm-hmm. Tom Taylor writes good Justice League stuff. Yes. When he doesn't have to be writing stupid injustice stuff, mm-hmm. but all the good stuff around that convinces me that he can write a good Justice League. Yes. And so. It'll be great to see what they do there. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating. Uh, just for our American listeners, 1,000 kilometers is about 621 miles. So that's how far away local is for us. That's the same as the distance between... Beep and beep. I we'll don't. not fill those in later. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Like, I don't know. We can probably look up. What's, like, New York to... Another place in America? <laughs> <laughs> New Jersey's closer than that. Yes. Um, What's well, Florida? How far is Florida? I think it's. I know it's further, but just to give us a sense of scale. Uh, New York to Florida is. I know that like Florida is a state, so it doesn't really work. Uh, how many miles did you say it was? Six hundred and twenty something. Okay, New York to Florida is twice as long. Okay, so halfway from New York to Florida, basically, yes. is how close the Florida nearest is. city of any. No, well, I mean there's Canberra, but. Canberra's not, not a real thing. See, I lived there for a while. So yeah, that's and so you know. Yeah, right. You got me. Uh, it's about the same as the distance from New York to Toronto. Oh, there you go. Look at that. That's some context setting for you. It's what yep. we do here. Set those contexts. Yeah, so Matt, we've got Wings of Danger this week. We do. It seems fair to assume that it will be about our brand new Silver Ranger who has wings, right? And has wing in his name, right? Yes. And the other wing. Yes. Of Doom Nature. Who has been separated from him. Yeah. Magically. Do you have any guess? I mean, we have so few episodes left in the season. You could imagine that this is like a he finally becomes a ranger episode, right? Yes. He gets his charger back. Turns into a Power Ranger. And then finally, five episodes away from the finish, we have our full contingent of ten Rangers. Yeah. We had six very soon. Yeah. And even... Yeah. Yeah, those last ones took a while, didn't they? They sure did. And I think probably because I missed a couple episodes, but it seemed like um, Tyler's dad turned into a Power Ranger. Yep. And then never turned up again, basically. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's more or less accurate. Keeper sent him away. Keeper's a monster. Yeah, so uh, Keeper is Xeno Wing's mentor. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if he learnt to be the worst or not. Or if he learnt how not to be the worst, by example. That's also possible. I guess we'll have to find out. Let's go watch that. Let's go watch Wings of Danger right now here on Ranger Danger. Gonna do it. That's very Time forceful. to watch things. It's very... Okay. All right. Now. Happening. Oh, you, you ruined it. After the be covered at the now and Ranger Danger, Ranger Danger, and we're back. Yeah, 
That was all right. Yeah. That was a good time. Yeah. I liked it. show definitely feels like it's powering towards the end of the show. It's power rangering towards the no, end of the show, you no, might I, say. I wouldn't say that. Oh, okay. I very specifically wouldn't say that. Okay. Take it from the top. Top of the avocado. All right. What? All right, anyway. Um, I wanted to talk about, again, we've talked about it a lot. The recap keeps mentioning Sledge. Yeah. And I feel like something in particular happened this episode. Yes. That is very much suggesting that he's not gone forever. Yes. But also... It's been 16 episodes. And there's five left. Like... That's not all this episode sets up either. No. There's, it's not like at the end of this episode, Heckle is dead and Arcanon is dead... And, like, Sledge can come back and be the last boss. Yeah. Um, if he's coming back, he does not have a lot of time left to come back. So, it would be weird having him back, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll get to that. So, uh, at the museum, yep. in the secret base, uh, we are learning things from Xenowing. Yes. Specifically, he built the Zords. Yeah. All by himself. He's the ninja of Dino Charge, you could say. I guess. He's not as good as Ninja. Oh, God. <laughs> Come on, now. Of course he's fucking not as good as Ninja. So, basically, he was Keeper's apprentice back in the past. Yep. And he followed Keeper to Earth after the things that we saw in the pilot. Yep. But he could only find his Energem, the Silver Energem. Yep. Um, Which, at that time, wasn't his. He just found it. Yes. Uh, so, he built the Zords to keep the rest of them safe. Yeah. Which doesn't make any sense. No, I mean... Because those Zords don't activate until someone bonds with the energy. Yeah. At which point... The bad guys could have still found them and not bonded with them, but used their power for... Yeah, and bad guys can't bond with them, as we know. Yeah. So, that's actually not a problem. Yeah, okay, look, it's a poorly thought out plan, but nothing we see in this episode suggests that that is out of character for him. No, I mean, he learned from Keeper. Yeah. So, I, I assume that he learned to do counterproductive things all the time. Yep. All right, so even we get a bit where Keeper is like, oh, I suspected they were your work. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you fucking didn't. And, like, I don't know how far ahead this show was planned. Like, they shoot it all in one big chunk. So presumably... Yeah, but they, they also have to write it progressively. I yes. Imagine. So I don't know, like, to what degree this... Like, you must know that this character is going to be the Silver Ranger. Because you know you don't have to cast a Silver Ranger, probably. Yeah. Like, there's probably stuff going on there. But I don't know if... I'm just like, it would have been nice if maybe Keeper had been like, I recognise them, kind of, at some point, or like... It looks like the work of Xenowing. Maybe you'll meet him one day. Who's that? Give it 30 episodes, and then <laughs> yeah. we'll have that conversation. So, uh, Xenowing wants to get the Silver and a Gem back. Yep. And uh, they're like, all right, great. Let's go do Let's that. Let's do it. Let's there's, be a team. There's like six dozen of us now. Like, if we just find out where they are and just go after them, I reckon we could just take them out. Easy done. Because Tom Clancy splitter cell, this sort of thing. Yeah. Zinner Wing is like, no, I must do this myself. And he storms off. And they're all like, what the shit is up with that guy? Yeah. And, oh, his spirit has been infected by Doomwing. Do you think that, metaphorically, Keeper coming up with excuses for instilling shitheadness into his protege. I mean, it might just be like, oh yeah, I guess that's what happened. I don't know. Yeah. Who yeah. Knows? Maybe, like, Keeper is not capable of imagining that that guy is just a dick. Yeah. So he's just like, oh yeah, it's probably magic. Magic. Be patient while he remembers what teamwork is. Because <laughs> it's not like he was on an evil team. He should know what teamwork is. Yeah. I feel like there are people in comas who wake up with amnesia and they're still are like, you know, I understand teamwork. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so they're like, all right, we're just going to go, we're going to go do some training. Training. Um, training. We haven't seen training in a while. No, but I love that it's a thing that they keep coming back to. Yeah. Particularly because it was never really a thing before. I mean, it has been once or twice, but... We spoke last episode yep. about how the show used to be simpler. Yes. Although the Xenowing Dark Energem Arcanon shit in this episode is, like, complex... Yes. It's very much an episode with the core team and another guy's story. Like, it feels like a simpler version than what we've been having in the past. 
I would agree with that up until the events of the last few minutes. That's definitely, yes, definitely up until kind of that epilogue stuff yeah. where everything goes into overdrive and we will... That's, Even, a, that's another one. Oh, sorry. Even like most of the monsters are throwback monsters to the very early monsters. Yeah, to the point where the Gold Ranger... Ivan says, oh, so these are the monsters you used to fight? Yeah. And he came along pretty soon as the beast. Yeah. So... Remember when he led his team into battle? I do remember that. I'll never Do you mean... That. Do you remember the greatest moment in Power Rangers history? Yes. Yeah, I do remember that one. Yeah. Uh, that was Knights of Amber Beach. If you missed that one last season, you definitely have to check it out. All right, so they're doing some training. And uh, the training consists of... Chase throws a rock at Coda. Yep. Coda swings with a tree branch and hits it. And when he hits it, he yells, home run, Coda. Yep. Because he's the best. He is the best. He's I the really got to go back and see that episode. You really do. And then Shelby and Tyler shoot it. Yep. It's nice. This episode in particular, those two are very, like... Adorable. Adorable. Yeah. And it's just, the show has just, like... They're not going to, like, say that they're dating, probably, but the show has just, like... They're dating. At the very least, they, like, know what the deal is and they're not weird around each other anymore. Yeah, I think it's interestingly distinct from Mighty Morphin, where, although they shared a kiss one time, Tommy and Kim never felt like they were dating. No. Whereas here, in basically two scenes, it's like, yeah, these guys are definitely dating. Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't have to be a thing, but you can tell... Particularly, I think that Tyler is Tyler is Tyler. Yeah. But Shelby, I think, is, like, her demeanor is fairly yeah. different. I, I suspect because she's much more comfortable in her own skin and doesn't have to be around a guy who she likes but kind of met. She just gets to be herself. And that's yeah. Cool. It's just, that's the nice, like, little bits that just really, like, escalate what the show can be sometimes. I love this show when it's good. Yeah. I love, too, that... We're getting to the point now where a lot of the characters are kind of self-actualized. Yep. Like, Chase is just a good guy now. Yeah. I mean, he'll always be Chase. Yep. But he is who he is, and we don't need to focus on him too much because he's okay now. Yeah, he's the best Chase. and Yeah. And I think we're kind of there now. The Tyler's found his dad and resolved his relationship issues. Yep. Shelby's resolved her confidence issues and her relationship issues. Yep. Riley hasn't really changed that much. No. And I think maybe there's something more for him going ahead. Possibly he was just too cool for school already. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I like now that they're, they're done on their journeys, essentially. Yeah. And they can just be cool and hang out. They definitely feel different. Yes. Which is, it's nice. It's nice when you see that sort of stuff because it's not... The obvious writing stuff. Yeah. You know, it could be... It'd be very easy for them to just write them the same for 40 episodes. Yeah. And, like, we've seen the show do that before with other characters. Boy, have we. It's just... Yeah. I like this show. I like this show. I'm going to be sad when these guys go. Yeah. All right. Uh, and Riley and Ivan, because they both got swords, just often call it a sword fight in each other. Yep. We call them Riven when uh, they do that. Matt, you know that the internet calls them that when they're banging. Do they? I mean, they must. What yeah. else would you call them? Eily? I don't like that. No, I like Riven. Yeah. All right. Anyway, it sounds like a verb. Yeah, they're Riven. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, back behind some bushes, Xeno Wing is also training. <laughs> Despite going off to train separately, he chose to train just slightly adjacent to where the Power Rangers were training. Yeah, because he's been a shit. <laughs> and I guess he didn't, like, know about the rocks that they were throwing into the air and shooting. No, he's somehow. been a shit. Oh, right, okay. So he's got a sword, yep. and he has got a dope sword attack. He does have a dope sword attack, that's true. He so first he does like just some flurries and he cuts a sword into like a diamond sculpture. Yeah, sorry, you mean a, a boulder? Oh sorry, yes. He's he uses a sword, a sword to, to cut, cut a boulder, boulder yep. into a like a yeah, three D diamond prism type thing. Yep. And then he draws a triangle in the air with his sword. Yep. Just blows it to shit. Yeah. So he yeah, he sort of like traces a triangle out and it creates a like triangle energy beam that yep. does a big it's his silver prism slash. Yeah. It's not a prism, but anyway. What's this guy's deal with prisms? I don't know. Maybe because he was imprisoned for so long? <laughs> I'm impressed that he came out without on the fly, <laughs> but also that's terrible. Yeah, that's, that's Matt. We have done this podcast for so long. That's my jam. Should be our tagline. Yeah. I'm impressed that you came up with that on the fly, but that is terrible. <laughs> yeah. A Ranger Danger podcast. Um... 
Yeah, because like he cut that boulder into a prismy type thing. Yeah, he's got a prism attack. Yep, he just likes prisms. Yeah, I guess it's just they. You know, I don't know. I got nothing, Matt. There's no. So you already did your good one. Yeah, that's okay. fine. All right, and uh, so he's like, "Hey, you guys were watching me," and they're like, "Yeah, we just you're in the forest yelling and attacking a boulder. Like, <laughs> that's not. We just we just came over. That was pretty cool." And he's like, oh, what? Now you want me to thank you for complimenting me? He's such a dick. <laughs> he is such a dick. Uh, and so Riley's like, hey, I'm good with swords. You want to show me how to do your magic sword thing? And he's like, fuck you. I am the best with swords. You are just a person. You are never going to be good with swords. I am going away now. <laughs> such a dick. But I love that Riley like was like, hey, I'm the sword guy on the team. Let's yeah. do swords. That's cool. Ivan is also the sword guy on the team. This team's got three sword guys now. That's fine. You don't have too many sword guys. Yeah. And like as much as Riley's the swords guy, he's also like the flying guy. Sure. So I feel like I'd give Riley the sword guy status. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, so we're, uh, we're learning about Arcanon's history now. Yep. Uh, so he's pure evil. I guess, yeah, sure. They all, all the bad guys seem to be pure evil, except some of them, apparently. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? I'm not sure I call Sledge pure evil. I no, think he's just... Sledge is like an asshole. Yeah. But he's, he's just out to make a living, working the nine to five. If Sledge could figure out a version of these events that didn't involve killing the Power Rangers, he'd probably go for it just because it's lower effort. Yeah, as long as it made as much money. Yeah. He'd be happy. Just trying to pay the bills, man. Yeah. It really, are, yeah. Thinking about it, the only monsters that are really pure evil on this show, like, is Arcanon, maybe like Fury, yeah, and like Singe, and I guess the monsters because we have no problems with killing them, yeah. But even then, th- those guys are evil, yes. But they're not like I am evil incarnate. Sure, they don't have the deep boomy voice. Exactly. All right. What evil is? So we watch Xeno Wing sever one of Arcanon's shoulder things. Yep. 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 Did we talk last week or the week before about how good it would be to know why he only had one of them? Yes. There you go. There it is. That's why. Yep. Good work, show. Yep. Uh, and so because he did that, basically, the energy was like, "Yep, dog dude, you're going to be a Power Ranger." <laughs> <laughs> Down to Jeb's side. Yeah. Is he a dope dude? If yes, Bond. I'm pretty sure the show has made that canonical. <laughs> uh, but the, even that wasn't enough, and Arcanon captured him. Yeah. And then he got the dark energem and touched him on the nose, and he went. It's the lamest thing, right? I mean, as a concept, it's really interesting. Yes. But just like for staging purposes, yeah, the little like boop on your head with the. Especially because we see him start to do it later in the episode, yeah, and he like floats it through the air at him, mm-hmm. and that's really cool. I prefer a beam. No, I think a beam is too like. I like the idea that this thing is so evil that like touching it fucks you up. Yeah, it's just it's too small to be ominous. <laughs> you know, I guess. But, like, I feel like definitely just making contact is not enough. No. We can agree on that. All right. Anyway, so, uh, there you go. That's the deal with that. Right up until the end of that sequence, though. Yeah. When they talk about how the bonding process occurred. And the fact that Doomwing isn't another dude. It's, like, an evil version of yeah. Doomwing. Most of that we knew already. Yes. And I was kind of like, in a big episode, we probably could have lost a lot of that. Sure. But I guess we needed that last little bit of context. I mean, like, I wouldn't necessarily have wanted to lose that cool fight between Arcanon and Xeno Wing. Because at the very least, it sets up Xeno Wing as, like, a competent force in the universe in a way that we haven't seen. And I guess in retrospect, it is important for each ranger to have their, like, I earned my energy moment. Yeah. So Even if his is, like, six seconds long. Yeah. All right. So anyway, uh, Xeno Wing flies off. Yep. That's it. He's done. And then Fury and Doomwing and Arcanon show up. Yep. It's everyone, kind of. There's so many bad guys. I mean, no, there's half of the people on the ship. I know. Uh, they're in, like, the standard fight scene quarry. Mm-hmm. I've been noticing it more and more. I'm yeah. not sure if it's because the show's going there more and more. I think that's what it is. Or if I've just reached the point where 
No, they used to do the beach in, in town and shit. I think now, because there's so many, like, big battles that have lots of people... Yes. It's kind of like we can't really afford to do that on location. It's just too complicated, so let's go to the quarry. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. So, Xeno Wing is like, stay back, Rangers. Doom Wing is more powerful than any of you. And Riley's like, no, I know the response to that in the official Power Rangers handbook. It's that he's more powerful than any of us, but not more powerful than all of us. Because we're the powerful Rangers. Oh, oh no, that's God it. damn it. Oh, Every time. Gotta study. Oh, gotta, okay. Uh, the Core 6 morph. Yes. Riley leads it. Like, you know what I was saying earlier about, like, back to basics? Even though there's still six Power Rangers morphing at once, it feels like those are the Power Rangers. Yeah. And everyone else is just like, oh yeah, and I guess we've got to fill out some more bodies as well sometimes. Here's the thing. Yeah. Why isn't Kendall there? I know, I know. Like, I I know the answer is because footage. Yes. Yes. But it's getting to a point now where it's silly. Particularly in situations like this, where it's like... Arcanon is there. The yep. big bad is there. They have an inner gem which we need to get back. The dark inner gem is there somewhere involved. We have a purple ranger who's sitting at the base actually not doing anything. So like anything is being analyzed or anything. She's just chilling. I'm kind of willing to give this scene in particular a pass because they go straight from training to there. Yeah, but it's she- weird that Kendall isn't at training to begin with. And also, they get places very fast when they yes. need to. <laughs> yes, they do. There's no reason she couldn't show up there. But, yeah, it's just... It's, it's a bummer. It's, yeah, it's just weird that she's treated like Prince Philip, who is not there because he's running a, a country. Yes. And Tyler's dad, who's not there because Keeper seemed to do something. Actually, something. Keeper sent him to go find a silver energy gem, didn't he? I'm pretty sure that was... Oh, God, have they not told him? <laughs> have they not... <laughs> this could be so bad. What if no one mentioned it? He might not have a phone. <laughs> they don't have... It. Oh, God. He's oh, they have communicators, right? He's going to... He, maybe he doesn't have his. Um, he's going to come back and be like, Guys, I did not find the silver energy gem anywhere. <laughs> and the silver rangers just stand here in the corner like, Hey, hey. <laughs> this is an awkward moment where he just like walks into a room, sees Tyler's dad, and just like walks backwards out of the room. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, no, that man should definitely be like. There's nothing left to fu- to search for now. I, I look. I think. I think he was also searching for the base of operations. Okay, but. I'm still annoyed that none of them looked where the giant spaceship crashed. Yes. Um, I'm with you on that. But either way, those who have reasons for not being there... Yes, sure. Kendall's just not shown up. Yes. You know when she could have at least shown up? Like, a couple of minutes from now, Keeper teleports in. Yes. And, like, if Kendall had teleported in with him Mm -hmm. and just, like, gotten to do something Killed off the attack for a second while Keeper got them out. Yeah. Whatever. Like, just something to be like, hey, yeah, I'm here. Maybe it's good to have one Power Ranger in reserve. Like, sure. There's so many of us. Maybe if I just stand at the base waiting Mm. so that we can't all get beaten at once. But she doesn't. She doesn't do that. She doesn't do that. All right, so they all morph. Yep. And they all start going for it. Yep. And uh, Doom Wing just, like, flies straight through all of them and goes straight for Xeno Wing. The fight is on. Yeah. There's a weird moment here, power scale rise, right? Yeah, absolutely. Where Doom Wing appears to be as powerful as a Power Ranger at least. Yes. But also is super invested in becoming a Power Ranger again. Yep. Which I don't quite understand. No, not really. Yeah, all right, cool. Because, like, he takes out the six Power Rangers yeah. in basically one move and then fights someone who isn't a Power Ranger but who is clearly capable. Yeah. Like, at the very least to a standstill, he could easily have defeated him if he'd been a couple of seconds quicker. Yeah. Like... Yeah, he doesn't seem to get any power, more powerful than his Power Ranger. Same things as he knew him. If anything, he has less wings. Yeah. So, I don't, I don't know. Maybe he just wants the suit. Maybe he's got a sure. spandex fetish. Yeah, why not, right? I mean, he created all of this stuff. Maybe he's responsible for all of that. 
Oh yeah, mm. he's like, yeah, they will get like a suit. Yeah, <laughs> gonna be real form fitting. Yep, yeah. I like that. I'm gonna get helmets, helmets shaped like dinosaurs. How did he build the Zords by himself? They're giant robots. He had millions of years, Michael. Did he, though? Yeah. He's, oh, yeah, I guess the time scale still allows him an awful lot of time. Yeah, literally millions of yeah, years. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> I mean, what I have never quite wrapped my head around, and I know the answer to this is that it doesn't matter. Yes. He's like, why the dinosaur theme? <laughs> so you've got the Energems. Yes. Like... Keeper said he gave the energy to the dinosaurs. Yeah, I don't know what that means. It was to protect them. It was in the first episode. We watched him do it. But it didn't protect them. They all died. Oh, yeah, there was a giant meteor. Look, I, I don't know, Matthew. Yeah, I mean, that, I guess, you know, I don't have a, much of a point here. But I guess all I'm saying is, like, the dinosaur thing seems completely disconnected to the power source. Yeah, because, okay, life. so Xeno Wing comes to Earth. Yes. He finds, presumably, all the dinosaurs dead. Yes. And then he's like, all right, I guess I'll make giant dinosaur robots. Yes. How does he know? Yeah, okay. But, yeah. And why? Yeah, why giant dinosaur robots? Because they're cool. Yeah, I guess. But so are, like, guns. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't have guns yet. Yeah. Except maybe they did because all the Power Rangers have got gone. Look, Matt, I, I don't have an answer to this question. Yeah. The answer is because Japanese people decided this show was about dinosaurs four years ago, okay? Mm. There's no other actual answer. Anyway, Dooming is straight up about to kill Xenowing. Yes. And Archidon says, break his spirit. Yeah. But he has his sword at his neck. Yeah. That's like... Break his That's living. his spirit, right? That's between your, your head and your shoulders. That's your spirit. I mean, I, I guess. But he's just... Like, that's the death attack. Yes. That's not the make him sad attack. <laughs> uh, and Riley intercepts it. He's like, ha-ha. But not like with his sword. He intercepts with his stomach. Yeah, pretty much. And it looks like it hurts. It sure does look like it hurts. I'm impressed by the way this show... Because Rangers get hit by swords... And get sparks a lot all the time, right? Yep. But this looked different, and it looked much worse. It's in slow mo. There's like a lingering energy thing on it. Yeah, they good, did a good job. Uh, so he goes down. Yeah, and now everyone, uh, they're like, "All right, well, you haven't really that didn't really achieve much, to be honest, mm-hmm. because uh, now you're super dying, and I'll just kill him again." And then Keeper shows up. Hooray! And I was like. Excellent. Keeper's gonna do. Did you see the episode where Keeper did a cool thing? Yes. I was like, okay, maybe Keeper's gonna fight Doomwing. Yeah. And like, you know, even if just a bit, and he'll be like, yeah, bitches, I'm Keeper. Power Rangers, get back up. And he runs away. He sure does. He runs them all. God damn it, Keeper. No good. It's unfair for me to pin this one on him because that's my own expectations. But god damn it, Keeper. Do something cool. Again, it's just like, if you can do those cool attacks, at least just say, like, I use my attack energy up for this year. (laughs) I don't care. Just explain it, you know? Sure. Whatever. Well, maybe, yeah, even, like, oh, why didn't you attack them, Keeper? Because I had to teleport, like, a dozen of you fuckers. Yeah, that's hard. Sure, say that. Yeah. Um, let me say this now because I don't know when else to say it. Sure. You know that big book that Arcanon has with him at all times? Yes. He needs to get that on audiobook. <laughs> that looks super uncomfortable I to wanna, carry that Why everywhere. does he have to carry it everywhere? I don't know. Maybe it's just, it's just his light reading and he doesn't know how long it'll take the Power Rangers to show up anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, well, okay, so you're going to yell in the forest and I guess it could be anywhere between 30 seconds and 6 hours before they hear that. So I'm going to make sure I've got 50 shades of Arcanon. I mean, it's a big book. I had assumed he has bad eyesight and it's like... Oh, the it's a large print version? Large print version of War and Peace. I don't know that it's big enough to be War and Peace. It's, have you seen it? It's huge. Yeah, but large print. I started reading War and Peace once. Why? Because the school library had it and I... I thought for a while that I might be the sort of person who'd read War and Peace. Ah, I see. And then I started reading War and Peace. And, and you decided, realize how wrong you are? I decided definitively that, first of all, there was a lot of peace and not a lot of war. Ugh, and second gross. of all, 
there were lots of Russian people with very similar names. Yeah. And I just, if you need a chart to track the book, I'm out. And it was so long. Yeah. So long. So long. So long. I feel like that was a definitive moment in your life. I don't, I don't think it was. Think about who you would have become if you had have read War and Peace and was able to tell people that you'd read War and Peace. Ugh. Yeah, right? Yeah. I'm saying that, that's a fork in history. Could, could we start doing a podcast about War and Peace? We'll do a chapter every week. No. War and Peace cast. That the, <laughs> Look, the name definitely could use some work. Well, no, because we have to break it up into chunks, we call it, call it War and Peace Meal. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Uh-huh, right? Do you think there's already a War and Peace podcast? Uh, no. I'm just looking at it, and it, it definitely looks like there's, like, people reading War and Peace as a podcast. Really? Yep. There's an episode of something called Give War and Peace a Chance. Okay, so what we're saying is, in a world where there are three episodes of Westworld and already 28 Westworld podcasts, <laughs> why no one has decided... To start a War and Peace podcast yet. Wow, I hadn't really realised until this moment how much recaps of things was that thing. Oh yeah, it's, it's just become a thing now. Wow. Well, we were kind of ahead of the curve, right? But no one's done a War and Peace one. We could be, hey, maybe the next trend is people recapping Russian literature. I don't think so, is my hunch. If I had to go with my gut on that one. Right. Uh, that's hashtag War and Peace cast, if you would listen. War and Peace feel, Michael. Yeah, I mean... I, I just, I feel like piecemeal implies, like, a not consecutiveness to it. We're not going to debate the name of our non-existent War and Peace podcast on this show. All right. Probably. <coughs> Probably not again. Anyway. So, all right. That's fine. Keeper makes them all disappear. Yep. Is where we were. So now Riley is in a hospital bed. Yeah. Not, not in a hospital. Not in a hospital. No. Just in a Power cave. Hospital. He's in a cave. Yeah. It's the best, it's the most pristine environment. Very sterile yeah. in caves. Caves noted for being just clean, totally clean. And filled with nurses. He's got a magic sword wound. Yeah. It's glowing, it's bad. Uh, and Kendall is like, yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's a, I wasn't really trained for that. I mean, like, I, first of all, you didn't let me go to the fight, so I didn't see it happen. Yeah. I'm not blaming you guys, <laughs> but second of all... I don't... I'm a dinosaur scientist. I'm not... Like, sometimes I can make prisms and stuff, <laughs> but magic... And yeah, we have a guy for that anyway. Magic sword wounds outside of my areas of expertise. Yeah. So, at this point, Zeno Wing is like, well, he shouldn't have gotten in the way. So, it's his own stupid fault. They're going way too heavy on this Zeno <laughs> being dick thing. To the point where Keeper pulls him aside and says, hey... Zeno Wing, stop it. <laughs> I know from experience that people don't like you if you keep this up. And he's like, he was being a good team person and learn a lesson. Yes. And, oh God. Keeper says, Michael, I think you need to mark down a learn a valuable lesson on Facebook. And Zeno Wing right? does like, what is this feeling in my chest? <laughs> what, what are these human emotions? I, oh God. It's real bad. It's unbearable because neither of them have faces. Yeah. No one's emoting in this scene, they're just talking emotively. I'm on board with, you know, Wing in theory, but I'm not on board with the suit characters as rangers. Like, I said that last time, but, like, just, the, the only way he emotes is by flapping his beak. Yeah. It's not good enough. No. So, I know that in kairo mm -hmm. the Japanese version of this show, yep. Zeno Wing was their keeper. Ah, he seems much cooler than Keeper. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, still, I don't want them. That sounded real bad. That's racist. Matt. I don't want those people, Matt's as Rangers. A, Matt's, oh, those people? Yeah. Matt's a puppet racist. Yeah. Or a... Puppetist? Puppet, you know. Okay. Oh, God. All right. So, Wrench is res resurrecting a bunch of old monsters. Yeah. Um, basically... Everyone was like, hey, I'm going to go after that dude again. Can you just, like, what have you got for me? And Wrench is like, okay, well, I've got Puzzler and Duplicon and the prison guy Slammer. Yep. That's right. Uh, and they can't talk because that would be too expensive. So, Doomwing says, why can't they talk in an angry way? 
Why is that a feature? <laughs> Why is he like, but now they won't be able to come up with bad quips? Uh, maybe he would like them to be able to strategize amongst themselves, and now they're going to have to do so with diagrams. Yeah, okay, I like that as In a manner that is not quite as efficient as if, like, can you imagine if they have to do the hand signals that mean, like, go on? Because if they're just doing them on the battlefield, the Power Rangers will just kill them while they're doing them. Yeah. Um, the other question is... Yes? How bad must the Vivix be feeling right now? <laughs> They're just like, the the power scale of this show has escalated so far that even when they were like dino, giant dinosaur monsters last week, they were like, don't worry about it. We'll let the robots deal with it on their own. The, the robots don't even need to form a Megazord. Yeah. 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 They suck doing the cleaning now. <laughs> yeah, poor, poor Vivix. Uh, meanwhile, Heckle tries to get Poissandra to... Break him out. Yeah, remember Heckle? Yeah. With all this other shit going on? Um, I mean, I'm sure it's only been like two weeks since he was on the show. Mm. But, yeah, so he, he makes a promise to her. He says, if you do this thing for me, I will tell you something that will knock your socks off. Yeah. Gotta be that Sledge is still around. Absolutely. Right? Like, it couldn't be anything else. No, if it is anything else, I will be shocked. Yeah. Shocked, I say. Where is he if he's still around? Sleeping. <laughs> it's where I'd like to be. Um, okay, but I oh man, I want like two weeks from now, Boy Sandra to walk into a shop and like yes. in, the, in the back working the fryer in like a dumb fast food uniform, <laughs> flipping a pizza. <laughs> yeah, because oh, he's been like just he retired from that life. He's a bounty hunter, not anymore. No. Now he he's makes flipping pizzas. Oh man, that would be excellent. Yeah. That would redeem a lot of failings of like where has Sledge been? If the answer is he's just been making burgers, because god damn it, he was a bounty hunter for like thirty five million years. Yeah, and it ended real bad for him. Yeah. Alternative theory. Yep. Hit me. He fell out of the ship, right? Yes. It was a foresty area. Yep. He got snagged in the canopy for like three you, months. Yeah, six he's been months. shouting and nobody's heard him. <laughs> Tangled in some vines up there. Do you think Heckle put him somewhere? That's a pretty good theory too, actually. Like, in fact, that's probably it. The ship is crashed. Heckle is freed from his cage. Sees a wounded guy. Sledge. Sledge. And he's like, you know what? You're going to be a problem if I want to run this ship. Why doesn't he just kill him, though? Because it's fucking Power Rangers. Yeah, but... And like, he says, maybe you'll be useful one day. Okay, sure. Justify. Job done. Job done. I mean, you've explained it. Should be a parents right? Great job. Take the day off. All right. So, all the rangers are like, you know, Xeno Wing, he can't be a huge dick because there's an Energem. And it feels like someone is about to say, you know what? I'm no longer actually convinced by that. Yes. When the park bench that they are at is just exploded. Uh-huh. On every side, every angle. Yep. Explosions for everybody. Um, it's all those monsters from before. Yep. And we do a running jump morph. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that stuff. Uh, start fighting the monsters. Mm-hmm. True. Meanwhile, back at the base, Xeno Wing learns a valuable lesson. Yep. It's like, Again, oh, I'm pretty sure we covered that last time, but that's fine. T- teamwork and Riley. Well, and love and understanding. Yeah. All right. So he uses his magical sword to heal Riley. Yep. He's even if he thought that Riley fucked up by putting himself in danger, he's a dick for not using his magical sword to heal him yes. like straight away. Yes. Absolutely. That I, I can only justify it by thinking he forgot he could do it somehow. <laughs> because if he didn't, he's a real douche canoe. Yeah. Like oh. that guy was in like critical condition. He had one of those machines that went beep. Yeah, you, that's how you. What if the beep beep stops? That's bad. Then you have to rub the things and go clear, and then boom. Yep. Zap. And then rather go. Oh. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. We all know how that works. <laughs> we could be doctors, basically. <laughs> <laughs> as long as all they wanted us for was when the. Did you know it's the the paddles are actually for the opposite. The paddles aren't for when the beeping stops. It's for when it's beeping too much? It's when it's beeping irregularly. Oh. The paddles shock it back into a regular rhythm. Right. If it stops, you're fucked. Right. There's no... No, you could restart someone's heart if they... If I their don't beating. that's a thing. No, like I, I don't think you can do it by rubbing electricity on their chest. 
I, I was trained a little while ago, admittedly. <laughs> wait, wait, a point. were you trained by Grey's Anatomy? <laughs> no. Okay, are you sure? I mean, yes, but this is separate to that. <laughs> okay. Um, was your instructor named McSomething? <laughs> <laughs> Not officially. Okay. By me, secretly. Um, Do I, I don't want to know. I was lying about that. Okay. Uh, I was trained to use a portable defibrillator. Sure. Um that you know, not metal pads, but it seeps onto the chest in a few different locations. I mean, I feel like if I was going to fibrillate someone, you no, would defibrillate them. De- if you fibrillate them, that's bad. I feel like I want the little pads, right? Yeah, sure. But also, it's probably not going to be your first concern if someone's heart stopped. <laughs> you know, no, fair enough, I guess. But I would still be a little bummed that I didn't get to use the pads. Maybe afterwards in retrospect. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm probably... If I get to do that ever, I'm yeah. going to get to do it once. Yeah. I'd like to use the pads, and I would like to yell clear. Mm-hmm. And that means don't touch him, because then you'll get electric. The thing is, I know you might think that, but the portable defibrillators, particularly the ones that are generally around in pools and stuff like that, sure. are actually set up to do it automatically so you position them and then it will get the timing right and the amount of voltage right that's good because i don't know the timing or the amount of voltage yes which is the problem with your theory which is you're just gonna be flying blind on timing and voltage i mean i could google it how long have you got you got like a couple of seconds right you've got enough time for everyone to run (laughs) into the room and stand around dramatically yeah i mean you have time to ask siri yeah, hey Siri, how do I defibrillate someone? <laughs> and Siri will say, I can't find any defibrillator in your local area. Yeah, it's like, where I cannot find the fries. Oh, look, them. Siri's just woken up when I said that. Yeah. Uh, and, What's yeah, Siri going to say? And now she's still listening to me say this. I'm going to stop her. Anyway, we got very distracted by that. Yeah. Riley's like, in a stable condition now. Yep. And Zeno Ring is like, all right, I'm going to go. Let's do this shit. Yep. Right, so they just straight up kill Puzzler and Slammer. Yeah, they ain't fucking round. No. Um, And then Doomwing comes for Xenowing. Yeah, intense. Uh, So they start fighting, and they're pretty evenly matched. They take to the sky. Yeah, a little bit. That's cool. There's some sword sky fighting, sky sword fighting, skyward sword fighting. No, that's Zelda. That's Zelda, that's a different thing. Uh, But Doomwing knows all of his moves because they were together in the same body for a very long time. Millions of years, maybe. Probably. Or two. Or, like, yeah, 12 weeks. Yeah. We don't really... Nobody knows. No. All right, so he goes down. Uh, Fury and Singe grab him and throw him against a tree. And Archeron is like, right, dark energy time. But I'm going to take take a while to do it. Well, you want to, you know, float it over to him slowly. Gently, slowly. Riley wakes up. Ah, because the sword healed him, he has magical premonition powers now. Or they're linked in their soul place. I don't... Is that in your lower chest? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I thought it was your throat. Oh, that's your spirit. Exactly, Michael. Got it. You're getting it now. Got it. Totally, totally different. Yeah. Uh, so he, like, wakes up, says to Kendall, hey, no time, he used his magic sword. Kendall's like, what? what? I... <laughs> I've been doing so much research. Yeah. What? Magic sword. Oh. All right. Tell the others to meet me in the woods. I had a magical premonition. Yep. Uh, then the others kill Duplicon. Monster's dead. It's a lot of murder this episode. Uh, yeah. Uh, Riley motorcycles through the city. Dark energy still slowly floating. Slow, slowly floating. It's interesting because at this point I was like, well, it, you know, this is kind of shitty dramatic tension because we know that that Dark Energy Gem is never going to touch and they're never going to rebond. Sure. Immediately thereafter, it's the Dark Energy Gem touches and they rebond. Well, they, they start to, yeah, yeah, which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, and then Riley shows up. Yep. And he's like, oh, I guess I know that magical move now. So yeah, he, and he does that green prism slash and it's hardcore. Yeah, he gets like glowy wings. Yeah, he does. He makes a triangle. Yep. He does the attack. I love too that his glowy triangle is like kind of organic and cut. It looks kind of like fire almost. Yep. Whereas Xeno Wings is very much like a geometric sort of situation. Yeah. It's cool. Uh, so he does that. There's a huge explosion. Yeah. I thought someone was going to die. Mm-hmm. No one. This show is never going to get rid of any of its bad guys. You think? Well, I mean, except for one of them in a bit. Yeah. But, like, one in 40 episodes. I mean, even the, the one that it got rid of, it's about to bring back. 
death doesn't mean anything in this universe we've learnt now. No, it sure doesn't. Because all of the monsters in this episode have come back to the dead like eight times. So the dark energy goes flying. Yep. Uh, Arcanon is like, all right, well, Doomwing, I could kill you, but the Power Rangers have shown up, so I'll just let them do it. Yeah. I'm not going to. Don't want to waste energy. Uh, Sinjin You've got Fury. so much to read. <laughs> Sinjin Fury, can you guys go find the Dark Energy for me? I'll see you guys back at the ship, yeah? Yep. Uh, all right, so uh, some more monsters now, like a lot of monsters. Yeah. Scrapper. Yep. Um, Hunter and Ninja and the Bones guy, and the Scissors Man, and the Gold Person. And uh, Dasher, and Prancer, and Vixen, and Blixen. Donna, and Blitzen. Donna, and Blitzen. Comet, and Cupid, and Donna, and I think I said Donna. Richard Donna? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 With the red nose. No, that's Superman 2. <laughs> the Quest for Peace? No, Superman 4 is the Quest for Peace. <laughs> Nuclear Man is the reindeer with the red nose, right? <laughs> No, he's got the, the, the fingernails. Oh, boy, that's... Uh, that's. I'm sorry to the two people who laughed at that. It was even a joke. I don't oh, know. No, that's what I'm saying. All right, so Scrapper shows up. Tyler is like, all right, uh, supercharge T-Rex mode. I'm going to go kill Doomwing. Carnival mode. The rest of you guys just fight all these monsters, I guess. <sighs> There's so many monsters here. Yeah. I have to fall back on my theory from Mighty Morphin, which is that the more monsters are operating at once, the less powerful they are. I mean, I'm willing to give this one a pass because we know Wrench is putting them out really quickly. He's reassembling them. Like, yeah. he's not doing his best work, yep. and they've all been destroyed once, so he's not necessarily like... You know, these guys might just be like Vivix with a coat of paint on them. Yeah, totally. Which they... Yeah, they go down so bad. Yeah. There's a point in this fight where every Power Ranger is fighting a previous monster of the week, and they're all just equally capable. Not breaking a sweat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, T-Rex Supercharge fight and Doomwing. Yep. There's a few uh, chicken-related puns that yep. get fired now, which off. Which one did you write down? Uh, well, it culminates in Doomwing saying that you're cock doodle doomed which, like, I was... Groaning at how bad those were, and then I I couldn't stop myself laughing. Cockle Doodle Doom, that's pretty good. Uh, so then he summons Ice Age and Meteor and Stingray. Yeah, right. Because why not at this point? Yep, why not? And so Tyler's like, "All right, I'll deal with those guys, but we're going to need another hand." Zeno Wing shows up. Where was he? He's just been taking a break. It's been busy. All right. He, he was in that explosion, but he didn't get hurt because no one got. I have another question. Yeah. Fucking where's Kendall? She's taking a break, okay? From what? From all of her... I don't know. Maybe she's doing important administrative dinosaur museum work. For all the rangers, though, this could be the end of the like this battle. Ah, uh, they'll be fine. If they get in trouble, she'll show up in a giant plesiosaur robot and shoot them off from space. Yeah. Don't like it. I agree with you, Matt. It's the worst. Yeah. But anyway... So, Xenowing fights Doomwing. Yep. And he manages to fight him to a standstill. Yes. And then just reaches down and grabs the Energem. Mm-hmm. And it's Morphin time! Yay! That's great. Yep. Everyone reacts. Mm-hmm. Like, all the Rangers say something. We don't need it. No. Just like, even if Riley had just been like, Yes! Nice one, buddy. That's enough. I don't need six shots of people being happy about the same thing. Was the music different for this morning sequence? It might have been. It sounded a bit like heightened. I don't know. Maybe pretty this cool is, either way. Yeah. Anyway, so he has like a teleport slash move. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. And then uh, Tyler kills like eight monsters at once. So the rangers throw all of the monsters into like a pile. <laughs> like they're making like a pile of kindling for a bonfire. And once they're all like stacked up on top of each other... Tyler just whips out a chain and a wrecking ball and a hammer and just wails on them till they all explode in one giant It's explosion. horrifying, isn't it? it? It seems offhand and callous, like you said, say. These guys, like, had names and they were all... But at this point, it's like the third time you've killed them. Sure. I imagine it loses its gravitas at a certain point. We're just like, yeah, blow them all up. Let's make this efficient. It's like, today, I went and I bought... Some books as gifts for my co-workers Because I'm leaving my current job Sure And the guy Because there was 12 of them 
sort of put them out on the counter, overlapping slightly, so their barcodes are all together, and then just quickly, like, bam, 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 and scan them all really quickly at once. Sure. He basically does that to the At monsters. the end of it, did he, like, swing it around his finger and put it into a holster? holster? Yeah. Because no. if he didn't, he should have. Yeah, I agree. All right. Yep, so uh, now it's time for the silver prism slash... And Doomwing is dead. Yeah. Do That's a cool move, too. Yeah, so he makes, like, the triangle. Yeah. It shoots into the bad guy. Yep. The bad guy is frozen, but it's all taking place out of time anyway, so it's really kind of a vague thing to say. Then he gets the, his wings start to glow magically, and he does, like, the same thing that Ivan does, where he just, like, swoops past and sword attacks. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. All right. So now it's time for our standard set of wrap-up scenes. Yep. By Except which, not. By which I mean, no, we've got more to do still. Yeah. Uh, so Poissandra gives Heckle a bomb and says, hey, remember, we've got our deal. Sorry, I just want to say one last thing about that last yeah, scene sure. before we move on. The Rangers celebrate. They've defeated Doomwing. They're all very happy. Yep. Riley and Zenowing in particular are getting along very much. And then they gun bump. They fist bump with their guns. Yep. That sounds irresponsible. Yeah, they've got magic guns. They don't have actual bullets. No, they have dinosaur explosives and that's yeah, okay, I mean when you put it like that, certainly. <laughs> don't don't bump them against each other. Alright. Bad gun etiquette. Sorry. Go that's ahead. that's fine. So Poseidon gives Heckle a bomb. Yep. He says, remember we've got a deal. He blows up the outside of his cell. Not sure why he can't use his super magic powers to do that. I don't know either. Anyway. Uh, so as he's running to escape, he overhears that Singe has the dark energy, mm. and we get a flashback. Yeah, this is an interesting flashback. This is an interesting flashback. So he was on Sentai Six, mm-hmm. but not as Evil Heckle. No, as Good Heckle. Yeah, uh, defending or protecting you the dark say, energy. Sorry, you could say he's Good Heckle because he doesn't have dumb highlights in his hair. Yep. In fact, it's all down and regular, like yes. That's how you know someone's not evil. Yep. That's definitely the rules. Uh, so he had the dark inner gem yep. and was running away from, from Arcanon. Yep. But then he got exploded and he reached out to grab it to protect it and it turned him into an evil. Yeah. Whoever gave it to him should definitely have mentioned that that was a risk. That's why you need gloves. That's very important to have gloves. Mm-hmm. And so he turns into Snide. Yep. And then Arcanon comes up and is like, lucky you'll forget all of this. For reasons. Sino Wing remembered all of yeah. his... Kind of I, in, anyway. Uh, so Heckle is not pleased. No. Which is interesting. And we'll talk about that in a sec. Yep. But basically, Sinja and Fury grab him and they're like, all right, just tie him back up again. Which was a weirdly anticlimactic escape. It really was. Um, And so that's the end of that scene. So let's talk about what's going on there. Yeah. First of all... Yep. Five episodes to go, guys. Yeah. Okay. All right. Does that mean he's going to get separated from Snide? You'd have to imagine, right? I guess. Yeah. They have those prisms. They do have those prisms. But he can't become a Power Ranger. Well, that's the thing, right? Like, if we didn't have Tyler's dad, we'd be back at, like, he probably becomes the... Whatever color that is. Aqua, Aqua. yes. He even looks kind of Aqua in his hair, right? For a while, we were saying, maybe he becomes the Aqua Ranger, and then we kind of threw that out. But maybe Tyler's dad dies, and he becomes a new Aqua Ranger? I just... I can't... I, like... I don't know. I've got this vision in my head of the show ending. Yeah. And, like... Tyler gives up being a Power Ranger, and so does his dad, and so does Shelby, and so does Riley, probably. Yeah. And so does Chase. Yeah. But, like, Coda's got nothing to do, Ivan's got nothing to do, Prince Philip desperately wanted it. Yeah. Like, those guys could keep being Power Rangers. Except they can't, though. Because the way this universe works is that you retire your powers and then new Power Rangers come around. Well, but not necessarily. I think that's... How it's always been. I genuinely think, like, I'd imagine that there are seasons where, like, you could keep being a Power Ranger. Power Rangers come back all the time. Yeah, but they come back like, we're going to get our powers out one last time. Yeah, but you could, if you shot that scene, you could have, like, Tyler getting his powers back. Yeah, like, I'm not saying they can't get their powers back. I'm saying, like, within this universe, what happens is you stop being a Power Ranger once the threat's gone. 
I guess. And that's like a universal. Man, concept. I just want Coda to roam the world as a Power Ranger forever. I don't disagree. I'm just saying that you should not expect that. Okay. Fair enough. Sorry. I just I can like I can picture a version of the ending of this show where a couple of people stick around as Power Rangers, and Good Heckle is one of those people. Yes. But there's and so little time left. Yeah. If this was ten episodes ago. Maybe, yeah. because then, like, then he helps get Arkham out of the way, and then Sledge comes back, mm-hmm. and that's how we end. Yeah. But there's so little time left. Yeah. It's interesting too that I don't know if they're going for like Heckle will be redeemed, sure, or reverted back to his good self, or if they're just going for like Heckle's angry that he lost his real life and wants revenge. Yes. Both of which are possible. Before what we saw, yeah. I expected him to escape yeah. and be like, all right, I hate you guys, Power Rangers, but this guy's an asshole. Yes. I will help you take him out and then we can have a conversation. Yes. But now I don't... No. Like, he's locked back up. Yeah. But he could just escape again, but... And Sledge and... There's so little time left. And is there going to be consequences for him being let out? Like, they must be wondering how he got out, right? Mate, mate, yeah. I have no idea. There's not enough time left to do anything. No. Who knows? Who, Although, no. having said that, every episode prior to now, perhaps not actively, but the idea was we're looking for all the energy gems to get all the power engines together so we can... Win. Sure, we have all the energy. We have all the engines. We have all the power engines. Yes, they don't have any active mission now except for take out the bad size. Yeah. So from that perspective, yeah, definitely next week it's proactive time, right? Yes. Yeah. I don't. It will be interesting to see what the show does in these last couple of episodes. Yeah. And then there's a bit where everyone's training and they do the rock thing and the bugs and learn a lesson and. Yay. Great. It's cool. Sorry. It's hard to be psyched about that stuff. It's yeah, fine. But I, I like it, but it was very similar to the first scene. Why is, like, these two scenes should have been the other way around. Because the heckle thing is the big, like... Yeah. That's the big exciting thing that, that you go, like, holy crap, what's going to happen next? Yeah, that's that, like, Flash Stinger scene. Or the Flash Supergirl Stinger scene. Yeah. Or the Flash Supergirl Arrow Legends of Tomorrow Stinger scene. I like those shows. We know. This we channel. know. All right. Uh, so, Matt, that's the end of the episode. Yeah. There are five left. There are five left. That's yep. crazy. So there's 20 episodes in the season, not counting specials, right? Yes. So yes. we've seen the Halloween special. Yep. There is a Christmas special, but it will probably be a clip show and it will probably be vaguely in and out of the Good timeline movie. of the show. Yeah. So, Oh, secretly, it's the MMPR dinosaur crossover. Could be real good. Yeah, it'll be six hours long and it will be released in theatres, uh, but only one theatre where you live. Yeah. That's it. That sounds right. Yeah. That sounds, sounds just... All right, Matt, let's talk about the Ranger Danger creature feature. Yeah, let's feature some creatures. I think it's definitely time to put Doomwing on That's still now it. that he is dead. <laughs> yep. How was Doomwing? I hated his voice. It wasn't a great voice. Particularly, I like... Poor Singe feels super sidelined. Yeah. But his voice is so much better than any of the other bad guys. It sure is. By a country mile. Yep. It's weird how good his voice is. Yep. Um, Matt, do you... It's a sexy, sexy voice. Okay, I, I regret asking my question. <laughs> All right, where are we going to put Doomwing? How much of Xenowing can Doomwing take credit for? Or how much blame of Xenowing can Doomwing take? Equally. Yeah, I mean... He's part of that story. Yeah. But as a monster, he doesn't do anything particularly. He flies. He cuts. He says cock-a-doodle-doom. I mean, that last one's definitely a point in his favour. All right, let's look at the list. Sure. Is he better than Fury? Yeah. Yeah. Fury's a shit. Okay. Is he better than... uh, Plissandra? Ah, 
that's hard because I don't know what to feel about Poor Sandra anymore. Yes. I'm super confused. She's to... basically like a supporting character now. Yeah, except like doesn't really have a characterization. No. Outside of like, I'm in love with Sledge, but even then that comes kind of... He's been dead for 16 weeks, allegedly. Yeah. So... Yeah. Yeah. Really, I feel like the show should have gotten rid of all of them at the end. Yeah, of... I mean, Poor Sandra... Uh, Curio, Curio, Ranch. Ranch do not need to be there. Fury could have stuck around, maybe, but even then, yeah, could have gotten rid of him. Yeah, kind of a waste, to be honest. Yeah, just like if they just had Heckle on his own or with one of them. Yeah, with Fury as like a sycophantic second in command for a while. Yeah, until other people showed up. Fine. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, I would say so. All right. Uh, what about? All right. Let's skip ahead a bit. Is yep. better than Bones, the monster who steals your backbone. Nah. Okay. That's Agreed. Just awesome. Agreed. Is he better than Sledge? I guess that, that does depend a little bit on what happens later. Sure, but based solely on what we've seen so far, I feel like no. Yeah. Because of that last fight that Sledge had on the spaceship. Sure. The team's, well, that was a cool moment. Sledge. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to say no. All right. Remember Nightmare, the monster who put them to sleep with magic pillows? Yeah. Better? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Duplicon, the one who made copy Power Rangers. Better? Yeah. All right. Ice Age. What do you think? I think so. Better than Ice Age. Yeah. So Ice Age and Sledge are right next to each other. Right So it'd be immediately below Sledge, yep. but above Ice Age. There we go. At number 17. Not so bad. Not so bad, don't we? You did all right. It's weird to see our number one monster puzzler again in an episode and him just dying off screen, basically. More or less exactly that. Yep. In a pile of monsters. (laughs) Garbage dump of monsters. All right, Matt, let's talk Fantasy Zordon. Yeah. At the end of last week, there was one point in it and you were slightly ahead. Yeah. It feels like finally... Having the Silver Ranger in my team has paid off. Yeah. After playing the long game on that one. seven episodes or something. Yeah. Uh, how did you do this week, Matt? Not too bad. Um, but again, I think definitely not as good as you, and I think I may have f- f- fell behind. It was a pretty quiet week all up. Yeah. All right. So, Dr. Wiley, aka Riley, sure, uh, had part of a combination of weapon. Yep. He entered a power-up mode, yep. and he did deliver the morphing call. He so sure did. He's kind of my champion this week. He got seven. Nice. Uh, software developer, a.k.a. Coda, um, had the combination of weapons and the power-up mode, so that was four points. Uh, Dr. Philip, or Prince Philip, yep. got two points for not showing up. Yep. And Kendall, or Kendall, did nothing for me. She was there, so I don't get points for her not showing up, but she basically didn't show up. That's a bummer. So that's a grand total of 13 for me. All right. I didn't do that much better. It's still very close. Uh, Chase was just in a power-up mode this week. Yep. Nothing else. He wasn't even part of that combination weapon, so nothing. No Zords this week, which is weird. No, no Zords at all. Uh, Shelby did a little better. She was in a combo weapon and a power-up mode, so that's Mm -hmm. four points. Uh, Aqua Ranger did not show up at all. And finally, Silver Ranger, Morphing Call, Valuable Lesson, and the Solo Defeat of the Monster of the Week yeah. for 11 total points. Puts my total this week at 19. Very nice. So, Matt, oh, it is so close. The points range on teams between yep. 227 points yep. and 256 points. That's a pretty small margin. And... uh yeah, it is. And Matt, you're on 240 points. Yep. Slightly in the lead, I'm on 245. Oh, that's still five points. That's not a bad margin. That's one point an episode to catch up. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm kind of hoping that the Silver Ranger gets another showcase episode. Maybe. I hope he at least that morphs occasionally. He, he was the focus for so long. Uh, hmm. Yeah. I think what we need is for Kendall to get into the field. It would be nice if she could do something, at least, occasionally. So, Matt, is that everything you want to talk about this week? I think so. All right, we'll be back next week with Freaky Fight Day. Yeah, I'm excited for that one, to be honest. Yeah. So who's going to switch with who? Let's talk about it next week. All right. We'll see you then. And remember, keep on being dinosaurs. That doesn't make... I don't like this thing. You introduced
just it's a dish show like seven episodes from the end yeah it just it just <sighs> okay keep on being dinosaurs Keep, 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 keep out of keep out of fossils. <laughs> Don't go extinct. <laughs> yeah. Keep not being extinct. There we go. No, I like that one. No. Keep not being extinct. Oh god. Goodbye. Please stop it. Don't don't be extinct. Oh god. Because you'll be a fossil. 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 Fossil.